Hey folks, thanks for joining us again on the Quiet Light Podcast. Today we've got Jeff Lieber from Turnkey Product Management joining us. And I'm not gonna say too much about Jeff and his business, I'm gonna let him say that. All I can tell you is that we have very close friends in common. If you go to Jeff's website, uh, you'll see folks like Ryan Daniel Moran giving him an endorsement. Ezra Firestone, who you guys know I love giving him an endorsement. That's enough for me. Uh, we've got some uh, other things in common as well. He's doing some great things for large Amazon sellers. He's going to share some of the tips today and we'll dig deep into what you can do to improve your Amazon business, whether you are a seller and own an existing one, or if you're buying one and you need to level up that business that you just bought. So Jeff, welcome to the Quiet Light Podcast. Thanks for having me, Joe. It's a pleasure to uh, you know be on here with you. You have an awesome show and put out some of the best content out there. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Just just blowing smoke right up my nut. You know what? I that's good start, man. Good start. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about everybody in the audience? Is like, yeah, Joe's. Yeah, okay, whatever. That's good. Uh, it's true. It's some yeah, they're, they're a little bit of truth, but a lot of it. Well, we'll see. Um, tell us about what you do at Turnkey, who you work with, and what the what 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 you guys are all about. Yeah, sure. And I was blowing smoke. I listened to one just this morning and uh, you're a great interviewer and uh, facilitator. So you, you get right. the nuggets out of people. Right. Well, so. I get imposter syndrome when, when people say that to me, <laughs> I get imposter syndrome. So, okay. Thank you is what I should have said. All right. Tell us about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jeff Lieber. I'm in San Diego and uh, my company is turnkeyproductmanagement.com. I started actually in 2014, not with turnkey. I started a pet products business, um, launched on Amazon ended up selling that, that company, um, a few years later. Um, and and the reason I sold it is because along the way I started helping some friends companies, um, that were, you know, crushing it on Shopify or on Kickstarter, different, different websites, uh, e-commerce, but they weren't doing well on Amazon. So they would ask me for help and tips. And I said, can you just manage, manage it for us on Amazon? So I would manage their Amazon store and was surprised they would pay, pay me to do that. And then, you know, help them grow to six figures and seven figures and realize like, wow, you know, it's, it's pretty cool if I can just only focus on the Amazon piece and master that I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about you know, the, the supply chain part and some of that stuff that I wasn't in love with. And so uh, that was why I sold my, my business, uh, my uh, pet products brand and baby brand. Cause I, I really enjoyed the, the Amazon part and help and working with other companies. So then, yeah, that was about four years ago that I really focused on turnkey and building that out and uh, hired some awesome people like my sister and my cousin and their friends. And uh, yeah. And then now we've been, up a lot of different companies. So we do full service done for you management, um, where we'll basically do everything for you on the Amazon channel to, to free up people's time, or we can just manage their Amazon PPC ads and DSP ads. Um, and, and we also have Amazon consulting gonna, as gonna, well, I'm if gonna, they want to keep I it in house. Acron acronyms. If you've watched enough of the podcast, you know, I'm going to interrupt and say, what does DSP stand for? Demand side platform. Very good. Most people don't get the acronyms. They say the acronyms and then flow right into something. I'm like, what is it? And sometimes <laughs> I can't come up with it either. I'll be, I'll be searching over here. Um, you sold an Amazon business, which is great. Fascinating in the pet space, killer space right now. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody wants to buy a pet related Amazon business these days. They always go for more folks. They go for a higher multiple and is usually, I mean, Year to date, we've had like four and a half offers on every listing, which is crazy. Um, but the pet related businesses are much higher, Jeff, much higher uh, in terms of total number of offers and as a higher multiple as well. Um, four years is not a long time, but then again, in this world we live in, I guess it is. You can learn an awful lot and grow an awful lot in four years. And the people that you've got, you know, giving you two thumbs up really know what they're doing and they run large, large brands. Um, you mentioned sister, cousin, mother, father, sister, aunt, uncle, that type of thing. Sounds like a family business. Are you not outsourcing 90% of your staffing's, you know, needs to uh, the Philippines, like many other folks? Is that a key distinction no, so, between I mean, you we, and others? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, we, we fired a lot of, uh, started with just, you know, friends and family and, and local people that they knew. And then, um, you know, we've had really good luck with, with 
college softball players, believe it or not, because my cousin <laughs> was, and she has a lot of friends. And for reason, that's been a, a really successful, like, I think they just come in, you know, with a team, team effort, team attitude and positive and they're competitive. And so we've honestly hired a lot, a lot of softball players, believe it or not, over the years. So, um, so yeah, we, we, well, now we've grown to over, uh, 23 team members and, wow. uh, yeah. But it's are, been, are most been of good. those in the States? Yeah, most are in, in the United States. We do have a few people uh, in the Philippines for uh, just some of the tasks that that just, you know, is really better suited there, like some data entry and pulling data, like what was our ad spend today for for all, all of our clients? And what was the, hey, gosh, just updating spreadsheets, things like that, where they're really, really great at that. And it's just simply a, a lot more cost effective. So there are certain things that we that we do in order to say, you know, so that we can offer better prices to our, to our clients. You know, if we did every single thing all in the U S you know, we would have to raise our our prices quite a bit, which would be tough for our clients. Well, given the fact that most of your staff is in the U S is a, is a distinction as far as I can tell, Uh, you know, a, a lot changes on Amazon almost every day, but what's the latest, what's new for Amazon sellers and, and what advice are you giving them? Yeah, a lot changing all the time. So let's think in the last uh, few months here, uh, Amazon Vine, the reviewer program, that's changing. Currently, it's free. I don't know when this episode will will come out. Right now, it's September 14th, 2021. Um, so if you're listening to him before October, um, that's when it's going to start uh, being charging you two hundred dollars per product to uh, to get those those nice Amazon Vine reviews. So um, so if you listen to it before, definitely use uh, the free version of Amazon Vine and, and any products that have less than thirty reviews right now. You should enroll them uh, for free. But even at two hundred dollars, if you're listening after, I mean two hundred dollars is a, is a steal to um, you know I think to you know if if you don't have thirty reviews on a product. That, that's a great way to help get you there because reviews are, are very, very hard to come by a lot harder than they were, you know, three, four or five years ago. Um, so that's, that's one uh, distinction. Um, is, is Vine, I always think, and I don't, I don't, I'm unfamiliar with Amazon Vine. Is it, are there any video uh, related things to it or is it just usually just and, uh, to explain to the audience how it works and actually me, but the audience, sure. Tell the audience how Amazon <laughs> Vine works. Yeah, I mean, they just have a, a pool of uh, of people that love writing reviews on, on Amazon and and uh, Amazon, the company trusts these these people, you know, because they're part of their their fine reviewer program. Um, and so some of them might leave video reviews, but that's not a requirement. Most of them will just be leaving you traditional. So honest they're not, reviews. are they verified yeah. purchases? Because that's what I look at when I'm buying a, a product on Amazon. So all these Vine, Vine folks are getting the products for free, um, but people trust trust the Amazon Vine reviewers, um, you know, for, for for the most part. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's a net positive for sure. Okay, gotcha. Uh, how big of a challenge are you seeing with your clients? With you know, when you look out your window in San Diego to all those container ships offshore, um, how big of a challenge are you facing there? And what do you able to do to help them in terms of, I would think, cash flow, because you can't just keep spending the same amount of money if you're going to run out of in- inventory. Yeah, we've had quite a few clients that that have had some supply chain issues in the last year. Um, you know, some of them, you know, that are buying from China. Um, you know, yeah, those those shipping container costs are now can be up to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars and so yeah, we've unfortunately had a couple clients that just simply had to pause their business, you know, because they were a little bit earlier on and just starting out and didn't have the sustained cash flow and business model to just be able to hike that up. And if they had to raise their price or double their price on Amazon, they didn't think that it would do well. So unfortunately, a very small percent of our clients, you know, have had to even pause or or really slow down um, their business or or put us on pause until well, things can normalize. Well, um, is the normalizing the freight charges coming back down or product actually showing up? Because a lot of it's just sitting slightly offshore and is mm-hmm. taking longer to get into Amazon. So are you working with them to um, make sure that your advertising doesn't outpace what they have for inventory? And how do you work with clients in that regard? Yeah, no, that's a big part of it is is inventory projections and uh, sales projections. So if we know, you know, if they know that they're so there's like kind of two issues. Either one, they've they've 
you know, postponed or ordered less product because they, they don't want to pay the, the huge fees, but they want to keep the business going. Um, or the other is, is some I've had these, these delays where simply the product is, is you know, months delayed or, um, you know, is not going to get to Amazon in time. So either way, yeah, we got to look in real time. And that's why, you know, we meet with our clients and talking to them all the time, um, you know, each month. And so, um, so yeah, it depends on the situation, but if they're, if they know that they're now three months away from having inventory and they've only got 500 units left per product, then, um, then yeah, we'll scale back advertising budget sometimes even taking ads all the way to zero because they may be able to sell all that product with no ad spend, you know, sales will go down, but if they got nothing to sell, um, you know, it's, it's just whatever's best for the business to help them out. And, you know, so some challenging times for, uh, for, especially in some niches. Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. You know, when we're talking, actually, I was on a podcast yesterday and we talked about, you know, a client that bought an Amazon business about 24 months ago, I want to say, and grew it simply by not running out of inventory. Novel concept, but she just bought a, a whole lot more salesmen. You know, the, the, the momentum was there. And uh, with the pandemic, sales actually went through the roof because it was more of a home products um, gaming business. Uh, but she didn't run out of inventory. And the person was like, yeah, novel concept, don't run out of inventory, but it's, it's hard when you're dealing with so many moving pieces and lots of advertising and container ships being stuck offshore. What, what, are, what are some of the other, I don't know, biggest mistakes that people are making on Amazon, whether it's using an agency like yourself or just doing it on their own? Yeah, biggest mistakes. Um, I would say for a lot of clients that come to us, they maybe only have one product or two products, right? And they're great products, but one, one quick way to grow is to launch either a different variation of the product um, or, or launch complementary products, you know, under that same brand that serve the same customer, which will obviously increase your lifetime value of the customer. Um, another is trying to find a product that you can serve your customer that's a repeat purchase product. I'm sure you can attest to that um, a lot of brands that have repeat purchase, um, you know, a component of their business probably has a higher multiple, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Buyers love that because it's money coming in every month as opposed to a new customer they have to uh, mm -hmm. uh, acquire every month. And the, and the, you know, the hero skew businesses where they've just got one skew, you know, I had an interesting discussion with someone a few years ago. He had a business in the, in the pet space. It was a supplement for dogs and it was one skew and he was making, you know, about $800,000 a year in discretionary earnings, profit. He was only working about four hours a week. He was spending a lot of money on Facebook, sending it to Amazon and all sorts of you know, tricky, slippery things. But he had one product, one SKU, and one ad that really worked. <laughs> and I kept telling him, you're on a knife's edge here. This is you know, one slip and, and, and you're going to fall and you're going to fall far. Uh, he's hmm. like, no, nah, man, it's such an easy. And he was, uh, he was such a hippie. He was cool, but a, a hippie nonetheless. He never, he never, every time I had, I had a call with him, Jeff, he had his shirt off and it was <laughs> very interesting. He's on. Anyway. Um, like, can you turn your video off? Sir? Yeah. <laughs> every, every time um, we chatted, I'd be like, look, look, it's, it's, a, it's too much of a risk for buyers. It's going to, it's going to demand a lower multiple. And he said, no, 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 no. The advantage to this business because it's easier to operate. And lo and behold, uh, Facebook disallowed the one ad that was working and that oh. affected the Amazon sales. And within probably four months, his business went from being worth one and a half to $1.8 million, low multiple for something with just 700 discussionary earnings to maybe, maybe at a stretch being worth a million bucks. And, and even then, that was iffy. He ended up not listing the business, tried to do it on his own, tried to do it with someone else. It never sold. He's still struggling today. Hopefully, he's added some more SKUs. But I think that's a great thing to focus on is, you know, the biggest mistake that people make is, 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 is a hero SKU or a one-hit wonder. How do you, as, a, as, a, as an agency in your position, guide them and help them um, you know, create upsells and whatnot from, you know, a single SKU that's doing well. 
Yeah, sure. We had a client um, in the like gym workout space, but like, you know, typically physical gym, gym spaces where a lot of their products were used and they were crushing it, you know, before COVID, it, you know, doing when we signed up with them three years ago, they were at like 200K a month in sales. We helped them get to over 325K in sales. And then COVID hit, gyms closed, obviously, yeah. and sales just tanked and dropped down to about like 150, 150K for the next couple of months. But in that very first month, like we could see, even though no one exactly knew what was going to happen and how, how long lasting you know, the COVID effects would be at that time. But we just simply got on calls with pretty much almost all of our clients said like, Hey, like, let's think about what's, what are the risks, what's happening? Like, what can we do going forward? And for them, it was, it was pretty obvious that like, you know, we can't create new sexy ads for these products. Like these products are not as relevant, at least for the next couple of months. And it may be the next 12 months. So we said, you know, Hey, what if we come up with a list of products uh, for you and we'll, 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 you know, something that could fit under your brand. So came out with a whole home workout line, you know, everything from resistance bands to, you know, just any, all these cool products that, that you could do from home, but it still fit under their brand because they were a fitness brand. So we didn't have to do a whole lot of rebranding or anything. And, uh, and luckily they were able to, you know, get, get those new products branded, made and launched within about 60 days. Wow. And we helped get them back to over 250K and then over 275K. Um, so that's that's one thing we did is we actually helped them come up with that list. And then the other thing that we did is we actually helped them expand internationally as well to other Amazon international platforms where it's like, what else can we do, you know, um, to, to grow sales? And so we launched them in a few countries they weren't in. Mm. Now, did that particular client just go to their existing manufacturer to get the additional product lines or did you help them find and source the product as well? Luckily, their, their suppliers that they already had had the capabilities to make a lot of these products. Um, I think for one or two, they had to go find a, a new supplier. Um, but uh, but yeah, but yeah, it just shows like in business, it's like you know, your, your guy, that you, your shirtless guy you talked about, like if you anticipate risks and changes coming and, you know, even, even if you have to, even if you wait a little too long, like, oh crap, like I'm going to have a really crappy two or three months, but how quickly can you adapt? Right. And, uh, and find a way and, you know, they move fast. We, we helped as much as we could to help move fast. And, uh, you know, that's the name of the game in business. It's always changing and you got to do whatever it takes to, uh, you know, try to save and protect your business at all times. I agree. Uh, one of the uh, folks I've had on the podcast, uh, a guy named Zach, he runs a company called Gemba and this is for the audience, G E M. BAH.com, Gemba. They help with sourcing, with uh, product expansion, product uh, manufacturing, finding new manufacturers and reducing cogs. They, they work with a lot of the aggregators that will um, say, okay, here's you know, five new brands that we just bought. See if you can reduce cost of goods sales uh, of goods sold by you know, 10 or 15, 20%. I think he said the average reduction in cogs is 20% when uh, he seeks out new manufacturers, which is pretty damn impressive and really goes to the bottom line. You mentioned, you mentioned ads in there a little bit in terms of creating new ads for the, these folks. What's, you know, I've, I've tried ads on different things for, uh, for, for the book. Um, what's happening with ads? Anything new? Yeah. On the ads front, I mean, it, it's ever, ever changing. They're still, I think like kind of a couple of years behind Google, but there's, they're really starting to catch up and, and, you know, not the same old types of ads that they used to only have an offer on Amazon. So um, yeah, like in any time a new type of ad comes out, it, it's, it's good to try to jump on that and test it before everyone jumps in and all the competition and, and costs per, per ad increases. So, um, yeah, right now we're seeing a lot of video ads are increasing. Like, even if you think of, as you're shopping on Amazon, you're starting to see more and more video showing up on the, on the search results and, um, you know, and, a 30 second video can just communicate so much more and be so much more effective. I, I in my opinion, than uh, than a stagnant image ad with just one photo of your product and the title of it and the price. I right. I, I totally agree on that. And before we go on to the next point, when it comes to video ads, are your clients doing so well, they hire a video production company or are they holding up their iPhone and shooting a quick video? It's real 
entrepreneurial homegrown stuff. What what are you seeing them do and what do you think works better? And I'm sure the answer is it depends upon the niche and product. Yeah, <laughs> I hate to say what you just said, but it does depend because I mean, so some of our clients are, are doing, you know, 300K a month. So they've obviously got different budget for yeah. investing in video production. And, and they often do, you know, those clients, once they get there or on the way up, they do, you know, invest in those higher, higher quality um, shoots. Um, but you don't have to do that um, in order to be successful. I mean, um, we, we have a, a designer in-house that, that does video edits and, and our graphic design. And, and they could take, even, even if the client only has stagnant images and they don't actually have any raw video, we can turn those images into, you know, a, a video where you know, it's panning in on the image or panning across and put text overlay and things like that. So e even that, I mean, there's even free video editing softwares out there that can make exactly what I just said. Um, so that's a great place to start. What I would say is you now any video is better than no video at all. Like just start with what you can. And then once you start getting some traction and be like, Hey, um, you know, it might be worth investing in. And I think one of the things that uh, sometimes people don't fail to do is, is think long-term of, of the investment in the ROI of a video. So, you know, one, like we had one, uh, one product that was a dog toy, dog toy launcher uh, called the Hurricane 9. And it was so cool on video, you know, shot a hundred foot ring launcher for dogs. And we just did one video shoot uh, for that brand. And it cost, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Um, but that one video shoot gave us enough footage uh, with enough dogs and, and, and cool clips that that served for the next two years. We didn't do another shoot for the next two years. We, we, that, we turned that into Amazon uh, product video for the product uh, display page on Amazon. We turned it into um, a video on uh, Facebook ads. We, we did it for social media content on the website. So one video recording that can take four hours or two hours to do, um, you know, ended up helping be the main driver, in my opinion, because that was our highest content, uh, quality content that we had. I mean, that, that drove over a million dollars in sales over the well, next, you know, couple of years. Hmm. And, uh, you know, so, so think about that investment, like, would you pay a thousand or 2000 to, to get a hundred thousand in, in sales over the next year, like all, all day long? Yes. Getting to that point where you've got that great video can be hard. People don't know where to start. One of the folks that I've uh, chatted with a lot is uh, Justin Kelsey from Vaxa Di Digital. I actually met him through the Trends Group, which is uh, Sam Parr's group on uh, the hustle. Uh, Vaxa, V-A-X-A uh, Digital. They're down in Charlotte, actually. Uh, good, good folks. Can you, can you give us any um, examples, like people that are listening now, Jeff, that... Uh, started with you at a certain level. And you've mentioned a few where they were doing 200,000, you got them to 325,000. And on your website, you talk about uh, eight figure sellers. Give us any um, examples or case studies of folks that you've worked with and what they were doing, where they were at and, and, and where they are now. Yeah, sure. We had a recent one um, that launched with us in May. They were in the, in the pet space. Um, I, I won't Do you, say does exactly everybody what, in the pet space gravitate to you because you, you were in the pet space before? Or is this just something? I've never thought about that. I mean, maybe only 10%, 10 of our clients are I was going to say softball players pet and pet products. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's all i do yeah <laughs> yeah all right no I'm we sorry. have you know all over the board uh sup supplements i mean it, it's all over the board but um but yeah but but we just happened the most recent one that like really was a slam dunk case was uh they launched with us in may they contacted us in i think february or march um they were, were already up and selling like on shopify and, and were doing well and then they had an array of products and um, already had a good e-com business base, but they just had never wanted to put in the time for Amazon or even tested it. And, you know, they came to us and we looked and said, I think this could do really well. And so, but what I think really helped them and what we recommend in an ideal world, if you're going to launch a product or, or a whole brand of products, whatever it is, but even if it's um, a brand new product, try to really give yourself 30 to 60 days to plan out an effective launch plan and execute that launch plan. So you're not just throwing it up once the inventory gets here and hope that it does okay. Um, and so 
they hired us and we had about a month or a month and a half to work with them before launch to like build up the page, get the page fully optimized, you know, get those video videos on the page, infographics. Um, and then they had some assets, some audience assets that they'd already accrued, like an email list and, and I don't know, small social following. And so, you know, we organized and, and planned all that out. How can we utilize these assets to have an effective launch? Um, and in, in the very first month of selling, which was in May, 2021, we did over a hundred thousand um, dollars of sales. And now it's September and we're on pace for 160 K um, well, this let month. Me, and let me ask on, on cool. hundred thousand in sales. Cause this is what's going through the audience's mind. Okay. But how much did you have to spend to generate a hundred thousand dollars in sales? Any idea? Uh, I don't have the exact number, but it was not a ton because like I said, a lot it of wasn't stuff 50, that we did. Dollars. No, 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 no. It was uh, under $15,000 for sure. Wow. That's Um, amazing. That's amazing. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, well, they also had some, some organic uh, assets that, that didn't cost money, you know, to, to just send an email or or what have you. Were they doing more than a hundred thousand dollars a month off Amazon before they decided to hire you and try out Amazon? Which, why didn't they do the exact number? Right. I don't know the exact number. I think they were doing around a hundred thousand on Shopify um at that time and uh yeah wow. so you helped double their business and then some because you've gone to 165 from 100 to 165 mm-hmm. yeah yeah 160 yep any recurring nature to their uh product line uh not a ton actually that they, they sell different varieties you know so you know people will eventually want to try a different different one or color but they don't have to. So it is interesting. They just have awesome, unique products that, uh, that are really, really cool. Um, but they're not like, you know, supplements or repeat purchase. When it comes to the supplements and repeat purchase, um, I understand that Amazon subscribe and save program is providing better reporting these days. Can you tell us about how it was once and how it is now and any tricks to figuring out what your, uh, you know, um, monthly recurring revenue is and what the projections are and things of that nature? Yeah, Amazon subscribe and save program has has come a long way. It has, is very much improved, and um, so yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't qualify for all categories. So step one is ch- is check if you're already enrolled. Sometimes you're automatically enrolled in it. Two is if you don't have it, you know, um, check or contact Amazon to see if you can get it. And then three, one, once you do have it, um, this is what a lot of people miss: is it's just you know whatever the standard is. It's you know five percent off of you know, any subscription order, whatever that standard is, um, you can actually change that and get more aggressive if you want. So you can, you can offer like 20% off, 30% off your first order. You know, you can do these different things that really make you stand out uh, from your, from your competition. Uh, So a lot of people don't know that that you can play with the percentage tiers. Um, So that, that's like one on, on setting it up, but then on Amazon DSP uh, advertising platform, which for those that don't know, it's a, it's a different, Amazon still owns it. It's Amazon's ad platform, but it's different than Amazon seller central. Uh, there's some really cool types of ads that you can do to really target and, and try to, uh, you know, sell, subscribe and save and, and mention that in the ads and, and see really cool reporting numbers. Uh, almost all of our clients are, are on Amazon DSP ad- advertising and, and seeing, you know, great results, you know, most of the time, sometimes it doesn't work for every single niche, but, you know, we find out within a month or two and either continue or, or don't continue from there. But, uh, but yeah, anything you can do to, uh, to get subscribe and save and get that recurring revenue is really, really uh, powerful. I would think it'd be easy enough just to, uh, if you're spending 15% on advertising, typically that you can just easy math is you don't have to pay any ad advertising dollars anymore, 15% discount off of recurring revenue. Uh, but yeah. it all depends upon the product and the cost of goods sold and Amazon's still going to take their piece. The, the last time I listed a business with um, a high percentage of recurring revenue, we were having trouble running reports that would show the exact um, amount of recurring revenue every month. It didn't seem to be exact. Uh, and granted, I'm not listing businesses anymore. It's been about six months since I actually listed one. Uh, the team is doing that now, but has that improved over the last, let's say, six to twelve months, where the the ability to run proper reports and and see what the recurring revenue actually looks like is that better than it was six to twelve months ago? Uh, it, it has improved. I don't know necessarily in the last six months, but there are definitely 
softwares out there, like third-party softwares that um, that can pull that data for you in a nicer format. Oh, really? So I would advise your clients to check that out. You know, like the, the managed by stats, the um, you know, the, those, those companies that, that basically, you know, aggregate your data and put them in nice charts and things that there's, there's good subscribe and save data there, you know, uh, in, in good detail. Excellent. Excellent. Jeff, this has been great. Anything else that you want to advise the people in the audience, whether they're, you know, hoping to buy an Amazon business or currently running one? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Amazon is obviously an amazing place to be. I think, um, you know, it takes a lot of effort and, and time to get it right. It's more competitive than it's ever been. You know, if you can, if you look three, four or five, you know, I started back in 2014. So it's changed a lot uh, over the years. And uh, but yeah, if you do it the right way. Um, you know, I think it should be one of your primary sales channels. I don't think it should be your only sales channel. I, I think you should have a Shopify or an e-com. And if you can get on Walmart or, um, or others as well, I think that increases the value of your business and helps you sleep better at night. But I still believe that Amazon is the biggest opportunity um, for in the best channel to, to, to get dialed in. And um, yeah, and if you want to you know, do it the right way. You can either hire a great team. If you're great at hiring and managing people, then by all means do that. That will probably be the cheapest, cheapest way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but getting the right people in place to, to, uh, you know, optimize everything you're doing on Amazon and not be wasting your, your money that you're spending on those ads, which is, you know, one of the most profitable ways to grow your business is by managing your ads properly on Amazon. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a, one of the best opportunities that I've seen in my lifetime. Excellent. I, I, I don't disagree. I, I've seen people do it on their own, struggle, and they can't you know, focus on other important aspects of the business and operating the business. Instead, they're in the grind, managing people, managing Amazon ads and everything else. And then when you find the right agency, there's a lot that are not the right agencies. And that's why I asked about the, you know, the, um, the, the, the folks, the softball players, right? You've got a team-oriented uh, mentality with a bunch of U.S., uh, employees, it makes a big difference when you find the right agency. It sounds like from everything you've said, from my research and from the folks that are back in you, I think it's uh, a good opportunity for somebody to be able to talk to somebody in the States. Uh, and I know that we talked about some resources that you offer on your site and online. I'm going to link those. Can you tell us what those resources are that we're going to share in the show notes of the podcast? Yeah, sure. We've got a ton of great resources that basically are designed that you can plug and play them into your team, into your business and help you help you grow your business on Amazon. So uh, one of the most popular ones is we'll actually grade your your listing. If you send us you know, a link to your product listing, we'll, we'll literally <laughs> grade it for you and, and tell you if you're doing a great job or not and, and give you some recommendations on uh, what you can do to boost your conversion rate. Um, sometimes those tweaks only take a couple minutes to uh, to implement. It just helps to have that outside set of eyes. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of good resources on there. Um, there's also a chance that you could just book a call with us if you're really you know interested in learning about like, is it the right fit? I'm not sure if I'm ready for an agency or if it makes sense. How would it work? What's pricing? Uh, what would you do for me? Um, you know, we are happy to hop on hop on calls with uh, with with possible clients like that. And uh, yeah, that's there as well. So turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash resource. And uh, it's all there. Excellent. Excellent. Well, folks, that's Jeff Lieber from Turnkey Product Management. And uh, if having him on the podcast and everything we said here is not enough, then uh, if you're a fan of Ryan Daniel Moran or Ezra Firestones, both of them are endorsing uh, his business and in some cases using his agency as well. So thanks for your time, Jeff. I appreciate you coming on. I look forward to uh, chatting with you soon. Thanks, Joe. Good hanging out.